What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the top 10 stocks that I'm personally watching and looking to trade heading into the May month of 2019. We're also going to be talking about a couple of stocks that you guys actually shouted out to me on Friday's video in the comment section and in the call out section in our discord group chat so before we do get into this all i ask from you guys is if you enjoy these videos you find value in the content that i'm producing here on youtube feel free to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and if you're new to the channel i have two links down below in the description box for you to check out one of them being the discord group chat and the other one being the facebook group both both of those are 100% free of charge and I guarantee you guys 100% that you will find value in those two communities. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it guys. The 10 stocks that I'm personally watching and looking to trade. But before we get into that, let's do a quick little market update. What is going on right now in terms of the S&P 500? Very quick rundown. If you guys want to see a further, more in-depth market update on the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, go check out Friday's video. But all in all, the gist of it is that the S&P 500 closed literally $1.03 away from all time highs here on Friday. We had a very solid day up $13.71 at the close up 0.47 nearly 0.5%. So what I'm watching for this upcoming week in terms of the S&P 500 is are we going to hit those all time highs which in my opinion there's a very high likelihood especially if we just nudge up one point in pre-market hours right one point at the um, you know open of the market literally just one little boost up will push us to the all-time highs again 95 percent sure in my opinion that we will hit that this week let me know down below in the comment section but from there you know once we do hit those all-time highs let's say we get to 2950 2955 at that point i'm going to be looking for a retracement in the s p 500 potentially a little pullback maybe we pull back and consolidate a bit like we did over these past couple of days before we push up to maybe $3,000. You know, that's just a couple of things that I'm looking at, right? But let's say we pop and break the all-time high this week, which again is very likely in my eyes. You know, we're going to potentially pull back and then retest 29.40, 29.45, which again is a resistance now. Once we break those all-time highs, if we break them, it'll become a new support. So that would be a pullback area in terms of the S&P 500. So now that we did a little brief overview, let's just hop right into it guys you know i have 10 stocks listed right here on my piece of paper that i do want to do a breakdown and again these are some that i'm personally watching that i did my analysis on some that you guys want me to talk about and let's get right into it guys so the first stock on the list is Facebook stock, ticker symbol FB. And for those of you guys that have not been paying attention to the markets, Facebook just reported their earnings this past week. The stock went from 182 all the way up to the high here at $202 at the close of the market on that day that they reported earnings. Absolutely ridiculous move here in Facebook. And now we've noticed from that top at about 202.25, and if we're hopping here to the one-year, one-day chart, we can see that level at 202, roughly where we popped up after market hours during the conference call, I believe, is when we hit this high. That level was a resistance from back in June in 2018, guys, right? Roughly that same spot at 203 so we hit that level of resistance we pulled back and now we're trading in between the 192.50 level which is a support roughly where we are right now roughly where we are right now i know we're a bit below but it's still the same general area you know this was a support from back in the beginning of july in 2018 and again that resistance at 203 so this is the the you know the horizontal range the horizontal channel that based on my technicals and i'm seeing here that is where we're trading in terms of facebook stock and for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the video or for those of you that don't even know because you're new to the channel i'm actually a long-term investor in facebook i've been buying facebook stock this whole time period here from about um you know the march not march 
October month to the December month, this whole area of time here and the longer term viewers of the channel know this, but I was buying stock in Facebook this whole time here. And I actually took a little bit of a swing position on my swing trading account, roughly at about $193. And my goal on this position in the swing account is to add more once and if we crack up above $195. And I am pretty confident, I am comfortable holding these Facebook Facebook swing shares, you know, for a couple of, you know, weeks at this point due to the positive earnings report that we did have. But let's say we slowly on the worst case scenario here, let's say we slowly start to creep back down into the mid 180s, maybe 183, 184, which honestly, I don't think that's going to happen, guys. I'm most likely definitely at that point going to be out of the the Facebook position in my swing account due to that being a pretty big loss there. And I don't want to take more than, you know, a two, 3% loss. And at that point we'd be down about three, 4%. So I'd probably just cut on the position, but I'm willing to leave a little bit of wiggle room here, hopefully to get out roughly at about 200, 202, maybe 205 if we are pushing it a bit. But Facebook, that's number one stock that I'm watching in May 2019. And that's the one that I'm personally in you know, one of the ones that I'm personally in right now as a swing position. So the second one is another one of the FANG stocks, guys. Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. And this is another one that I'm currently in. I took a small position on Friday, a little weekend swing. The goal here is to hop out before earnings. And for those of you guys that don't know, Apple is reporting earnings on the 30th of the month, guys. So 4 slash 30 after market hours at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The company is going to report earnings. So this is going to fluctuate the stock most likely to the upward direction or the downwards direction, right? Typically, Apple does like to move on earnings days either up or down. We just have to see what the year-over-year -year growth is, what the guidance is. If the earnings report is positive, that's going to be a catalyst for the direction to the upside. Let's say the earnings report is negative. That's obviously going to be a negative catalyst for the company. But if we're just judging on a technical perspective here, guys, why I'm liking Apple and why I did hop in on Friday for a weekend swing is because of the margin of profit that's been opened up. We hit nearly $209 per share on Apple, and now we're pulling back to around the 204, mid 204 level, and we're maintaining the 50 simple moving average support that's been a support on Apple stock over the past couple of months, right? We've noticed since the bottom at 142, we've hit that level constantly higher lows and bouncing on the 50 simple moving average. And guys, based on the technicals that I'm seeing here, we've been consolidating a bit towards the end of the market and after market hours on top of this level. Now, all we need to see is a pop up before I add more money into Apple stock. And another thing I'm looking at here is the RSI level guys, right? Notice how we were overbought or over. So or, yes, overbought in terms of the RSI on Apple at about $208, we're pulling back, which brought the RSI to a more reasonable spot. So in terms of the RSI, you know, the 50 simple moving average here, the moving averages in general, you know, Apple's looking pretty solid. And that's why it's the number two one that I'm watching. But be cautious because like I mentioned in one of my previous videos called, you know, warning while trading during earnings season, Apple can go up. 5-10%, down 5-10% on this earnings, and that is something that you have to just keep a, 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 an eye on, keep uh, in the back of your minds, especially if you are trading it during and holding it through earnings, right? So AMD is another company that's reporting earnings on the 30th, and I'm very interested to see what direction AMD is going to pick on this earnings report, right? Excuse me. So if you've been following AMD, it's been really stuck in this channel between $27 roughly and roughly $28. It's been going up, down. If you've been playing in and out of AMD, you know, two, three day swing trades, buying at the bottom towards $27, you've been playing it well, right? But me personally, you know, I took a little bit of a profit on AMD a couple of trading days back, and I've just been waiting for it to break out of $28 and maintain that. That level and slowly start to truck up the $30 for me to swing trade it. But we have not gotten that, right? We almost did this day, right? I was considering a position here 
potentially pre-market hours or um, you know pre-market hours heading into the market on the 25th of April. But notice how again we did not like that $28 level. We opened up and we tanked. The bears took over here from $28.50 all the way down to $27.12. Guys, we just don't like the level of $28 in terms of AMD. So let me just clear this drawing set because I can tell that it's a bit sloppy here. And let me just pull out some um you know, this resistance and support tool very quickly so we can get a clearer understanding of what I'm seeing here, right? So we're trading in between this channel, 27, 28. We tried holding it again. We failed. We popped down. We ended up bouncing here. So this could have been a nice little bounce play day trade on this past Friday. I personally didn't do it. But with earnings coming up on the 30th, this is going to give us some direction, in my opinion, on AMD. A lot of people think it's going to pop up above $28, fine and start to truck up to $30. A lot of people think that's going to happen, right? Some people think it's going to fall through the floor and then maybe get back down to $26 to the $26 level, which if we're looking on the one year, one day, you know, the $26 level would put us closer to this 50 SMA support level. So on a longer term chart, you know, dropping down to 26, that might be a pretty solid entry, you know, on a long term swing trade on AMD. But again, it all depends on what the earnings report does so as of now guys i'm simply watching it you know if we get a pop above 28 29 you know that's going to be a big bullish move on amd if we're breaking below 27 on the earnings report right you know just keep an eye on this longer term one year one day chart i believe it is yep the one year one day the 50 sma roughly at about 26 dollars 25.75 that level has been a strong support if we get there on a positive earnings report guys this is definitely going to be a swing trade that I'm looking to take a part in and kind of and you know part of me kind of does really want it to get down here on a positive earnings report you know something like a Procter and Gamble play where the stock tanked not really tanked but the stock went down on a good earnings report if that happened to AMD guys you know if it went down that's a big if on a solid earnings report I think that would be a very very good play um, you know there on advanced micro devices so UWT is the fourth one we're going to be talking about today. UWT, it's not a stock, it's an ETF that trades based upon slash CL, also known as crude oil. So crude oil has been on an absolute tear in 2019, guys. This is what we're seeing right here, light sweet crude oil futures. It's, they've gone from $42 all the way up to $66. That's an absolute ridiculous move. And we've, the investor community, right, the trading community, we've been waiting for a sizable pullback on crude oil. And it finally seems like we got it, right? On Friday, down nearly $2.50, down about nearly 4%, 3.7% to be exact. And we're maintaining that 180 simple moving average support that's been a support over the past couple of months with a bullish green candlestick forming towards the after hours here. These are good signs, guys. Very, very good signs. So what I want to do here is I want to enter into UWT on the confirmation of the bounce because UWT is going up whenever crude oil is going up, guys. And, you know, if crude oil does recover this week, which I think there's a very strong possibility that it does, UWT is going to be poised for a ridiculous, ridiculous run. So keep an eye on UWT. Let's go back to that chart very quickly. If we just look on the 20 day so we can see the, the big dip here from $24 down to $20.40. Guys, this is opening up about a 15% margin of profit. So keep an eye there. This one, in my personal opinion, is the number one ETF, inverse ETF, for this week and the number one one that I'm personally watching, right? Notice how we were in that downwards little, um, you know, downwards channel. We popped out of there. That was a big breakout move. We popped to 24. Now we're selling back down. Just keep an eye, guys, on that pop, the continuation. There's going to be a lot of upside there, in my opinion. So Procter & Gamble is 
the fifth one. I've been talking about this one a lot in the videos, guys. I don't want to, you know, just, just keep talking about this and spending too much time. But for those of you new viewers out there that don't know, maybe you didn't watch my previous video, obviously, because you're new to the channel. Procter & Gamble is the number one swing trade that I'm in right now in terms of dollar value and how many times that I've bought into it, right? And for those of you guys that don't know, Procter & Gamble reported earnings a couple of days ago. I forget the exact day. If we can see here on the five-day, five-minute, it was this day. The stock ended up going from 107 all the way down to about 102, ended up adding money into it about 103.80, added some more money towards the close of the market here. And I actually added more money into Procter & Gamble this past Friday. So I'm in it on three separate increments right now. And the whole idea here is, guys, the earnings report was solid, right? They beat on EPS, they beat on revenue, but the Gillette segment and one of the baby segments, they were weak, right? But they're they're combating that with bringing in some new innovative products into the Gillette segment of the business to stimulate some growth, which I think is great, right? And if we're just looking at the broad, the broad, broad category of products that Procter & Gamble has, you know, one little baby segment, not really a baby segment, but one smaller segment of the business, which is the Gillette business, you know, this brought down, in my opinion, the stock, right? And again, the earnings report in general was great besides this one little mishap. And that was a buying opportunity in my eyes, right? We not only maintained the 180 SMA support on the 184 hour chart, which has been a support for a very long time, right? But we've maintained that multiple days in a row, right? So I got in again on that day and I added more money at 105 when we popped up aggressively and we broke above the, the 50 simple moving average here. So this is one that I'm planning on swinging here for a couple of weeks. The goal is to sell roughly at about 108 right now. But like I mentioned in a couple of videos ago, this is one that I might honestly hold on to for a bit longer, right? I see a lot of upside in Procter & Gamble here, maybe 110, maybe 111, maybe 109. That's somewhere where I'm aiming for it as of right now. And of course, I'll keep you guys up to date on the position. Let me know down below if you have any questions, what you guys think about these stocks so far, and let's get onto it, guys. So the JNUG ETF is the next one that I'm watching here for this upcoming week. Excuse me, this one did absolutely amazing this past Friday, up 69 cents, up 9.22%, and we saw a big rally in gold actually, right? JNUG trades on gold, JNUG future, or the gold futures rather, whenever they're going up, JNUG is going up as well. So we talked about how Overall, the trend of gold right now is very bearish, right? We've had lower highs. We pushed to a lower low at about 1270. And even the level that we are at right now is still technically a lower high from the previous. So the downwards trend is still intact, right? We're also noticing the bearish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180. All the bearish signs on J, uh, the GC are there right now, right? I mean, there's, there's no denying that at this point. So what I want to see in terms of gold is, A, well, we already saw one one resistance break. That's good right now, which was at about 1280, the old support. We broke out of that. That's a good sign. Now I want to see a break into the 1290s, which is a support from back from a couple of weeks ago, which obviously now is a new resistance right here where my cursor is. So if we break out of there and then ultimately break out of the 180 SMA and into the $1,300 level, this is going to be a bullish breakout move on gold, in my opinion. And then JNUG is going to benefit from that very, very much, right? And at this point, JNUG's at an, also at a resistance at about $8.15 or 830 roughly, which was a support from a couple of months ago. We broke under it. Now it's a resistance. And also at the 50 simple moving average. So these points need to be broken above for JNUG, guys. So getting into some that you actually called out now, starting off with BAC Bank of America. So this is one that reported earnings a couple of weeks ago. And from that point in time, actually not a couple of weeks ago, it was re really like two weeks ago. Yeah, about 10 days ago, roughly. 
uh, BAC reported earnings, right? We can see, I don't really recall what their earnings was. Yeah, they beat on EPS from what I'm seeing right here. And the stock's been doing very well since then. And we actually just broke a very critical resistance on BAC. And let me just pull out my tools very quickly to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. We ended up breaking the $30 and roughly 15 to 20 cent resistance here on BAC. And we're trending roughly at about $30.35 right now. So the levels that I really want to see now on BAC is really to just maintain that old resistance as a new support. This resistance we broke out of, maintain it as a new support as well as the 50 simple moving average support here that we're seeing that's been a support over the past couple of weeks. That needs to be maintained as well. With the next resistance at this point, if we're looking back at this point from back in the beginning of October, it's roughly at about 3060, right? So we're trading in this channel right now from about $30 flat up to about 3060. And if we break 3060 at that point, guys, we're going to be headed up to about 3150, which is the next resistance on BAC. And another thing I want to point out here is the 50 SMA is crossing above the 180 SMA, which is a very bullish sign on BAC, looking pretty solid right now. So I'm going to keep this one on my watch list, keep it on you know, really just watching it, to be quite honest with you guys, due to it breaking out of this resistance, this could be a very big, um, you know, breakout move on BAC. So the last two or three rather, well, two of the last three are both stocks that tanked recently due to Amazon coming out with news that they are going from two day shipping, right? To one day shipping. Now this absolutely obliterated target and Walmart. So I'm going to group these in kind of the same analysis, right? Because they kind of got hit very similarly, right? Target got hit from about $84 down to about $77. And then Walmart got hit from about $103 down to about $101, $101.50 where it is right now. So what we're noticing in both of these stocks, guys, if we're looking at Target and Walmart, they're both holding moving average support levels right now. We broke the first support on Target, which was the 50 SMA. You know, we broke that very aggressively. But it seems like towards the end of the market right now that we are maintaining the 180 SMA as a support. And if we just hop in a bit closer here, um, you know, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? Why does it keep doing that? All right, so let's see. We broke, uh, you know, momentarily below there. And now we're seeing, it seems like we've found a bit of a support here, um, you know, down really at about 76, 77. And you can see how evident that is on the one day, one minute, right? This is telling me that we found a very solid support. Bottom, 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 bottom. That's about four or five bottoms there on target at about $76, $77. That's a very good sign. So I actually like target for potential bounce back play here since it, it dropped very heavily, right? Down about 5 6%. The RSI is very oversold. I'm keeping an eye on it here. If we maintain this level, slowly start to truck back up, maybe to the mid $77, $78, this can be a very nice bounce back play. Same thing with Walmart, right? We broke the 50 SMA support. Seems like we got down to the 180 SMA and now we're kind of hovering in between this level So now the 50 SMA is actually acting as a resistance We want to break out of that level back into the 102s based off what I'm seeing here for this uptrend to continue in Walmart. And the key thing here is the uptrend is still intact, guys. You know, we're still at a higher low from the previous. This is still intact. But there's risk, right? There's risk. Let's say this news carries on, you know, over the next couple of days and we slowly start to sell back off down and break, especially the $100 level into the $99 level. At that point, the 180 SMA support level is going to be tested again. And if we break that, that level, that's going to be a very, very bad bearish pattern, com a complete break of pattern at that point, and I'm not going to be watching Walmart. But I do like these four bounce back plays. We just need to see if they reverse back to the upside. That is 100% key right now. So the last one we're going to be talking about before I do end off this video today, guys, is Boeing stock, ticker symbol B. A, and they actually just reported their earnings. 
They did pretty bad on earnings. We can see the earnings estimated 329 per share. Came in at about 316. If we go here on the live news, let's see, because I forget exactly what they did report. What they did they report on the 24th? Let's go back to the 24th news very quickly here. Let's see. Um, let's see if we can get it. Okay. Here it is, guys. 316 misses the 333 estimate. 22 billion in sales misses the 24 billion estimate. So this is not that good in terms of an earnings um, report. They missed on EPS. They missed on revenue. But it seems like the stock didn't negatively react to it, right? It seems like almost the stock has already priced in the negative stuff, right? And for those of you guys that don't know, you know, the 737 crashes, the 737 max, two of them crashed in a six-month span, and that's that sent, that sunk the stock, right, from 444 down to about 364. So it seems like investors out there, the market in general, already had it priced in that this earnings report wasn't going to be all that great, right? And that's why the stock didn't really budge, in my personal opinion. But one positive thing we are seeing here, let me just quickly uh, clear this drawing set for you all. A positive thing that I am seeing here is that we are maintaining the 375 level of support, right? Take an eye, take a look at that, right? The 375 level was a resistance a couple of weeks ago towards the end of March in 2019, right? We broke out of that a couple of days ago and now we're maintaining it as a new support, looking to retest this 180 simple moving average um, resistance here. Clearly a resistance if we break out of that. You know, there could be a margin between 380-ish, where we are right now, 381, 382 at the point where we'd break out of that moving average resistance up to about 397. But one also thing I want to keep an eye on, um, I'm keeping an eye on and I want you guys to keep an eye on is these moving averages. Take a look at what's happening here. Either one of two things is going to happen, right? Take a look. The 50 SMA is slowly starting to curl up. This, if it breaks out of the 180 SMA, which it seems like it wants to, right, because it's pointing up, it's slowly starting to push up towards it, that's going to be a bullish move. And at that point, you know, from 380 up to, uh, you know, 398, 397, that could be a very, very feasible trade for BA. But let's say we tank on Monday, right? Let's say, you know, the 180 crosses below the, the, the 50. You know, that's going to be a very big bearish move on BA, which honestly is what I'm watching for. I want to see what the moving averages are going to do because they're so close. You know, it's going to pick a direction. At that point, we can decide what we want to trade. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This were, or these were rather the top 10 stocks that I'm watching, looking to trade right now, heading into the May month of 2019. So if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about these stocks. What are you trading? Drop a ticker down below. I would love to know. Also, if you're not, if you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? You should be subscribed to this channel. Hit that red button. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. I appreciate all you guys out there watching, taking your time out of your days to watch these videos. It means a lot to me. I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck in the May month. Peace out.